Today you're going to learn the basics of the physics in Blender, so you can start to play with different objects. Let's create a floor, mesh, plane. Press S to make it bigger, and let's select this cube. Press G, G, and make it higher, something like that. Let's delete the camera and the light because now we don't need it. So if we press spacebar, nothing happens. Why? Because we don't have any physics in any object. So we have to start to add some physics. How we do that? Let's select this cube, and we want this cube be affected by the gravity. So we have to go to this icon that is like a planet with a moon and says physics. So click here, and we need to add a rigid body. So now this object, this cube, has a rigid body. What is a rigid body? Basically now have mass. It has one kilo. So if we press spacebar, by the way, always go to the beginning when you start a new physics simulation. So now we press spacebar, and we have this animation. Okay, at least the cube is being affected by gravity. It's going to the hell, but it's moving. Perfect. Let's come back to the beginning. So we can do that this affect the floor. We need to select the floor and add another rigid body. Remember, if we don't have rigid body, objects are like ghosts, so nothing can hit on them. So let's select the floor and go to physics, rigid body. Really important, if you press spacebar, now both fall. Why? Because both are being affected by gravity. So if you want one object to not be affected by gravity, you need to select in type passive. Passive means like, I'm going to ignore gravity. So now, if we press spacebar, our cube is interacting with the floor. So we created our first physics animation. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to the beginning. And now I'm going to tilt this floor. So I'm going to select it, press R, Y, and I'm going to rotate it a bit, something like this. And if we press spacebar, we have this animation. So now we are going to learn that objects have like friction in the surface. So what we can do is to select this floor and go to rigid body. And here in surface response, we have friction. So if we click this and leave it like zero, that means that have less friction, so the object goes faster. However, if we add more friction, for example, one, now it has a lot of friction, so the object stays in the place without moving. Another thing you have to know, let me do this. Also, we have bounciness. Bounciness means that something can have a bounce. So now it has zero. If we press play, we have this. A little, little bounciness. Okay, but what we can do is to increase this. So let's go to the beginning and let's see what happened. Hmm, this doesn't work. Why? Because if you want also this object to have a lot of bounciness, you have to select the object and also increase the bounciness in the object, not only in the surface. So now if we increase this and press play again, now it has more bounciness. And more you add, higher goes. Actually, you can click and add more. The maximum is not one. You can add something, for example, 50. And now let's see what happened. I think we put too much, but you get it there, right? <laughs> Let me add something like 10. So you can play with the bounciness to see how objects interact. OK, let me delete the bounciness. And I want to show you this feature called sensitive, where we have collision margin. What is this? This, if we activate it, now we are working with the cube, it's like a little margin where you can define how far away is the margin to interaction. Look, it's easier if I show it to you. So now it has like really, really small. But if we put like one meter, this means, look, what's going on here? Basically, it's like having, imagine like one meter of margin of collision. So this is the collision. So now that's why here is interacting. So you can add a little margin if you want, 
when you don't want objects to touch some other surface. You can see now, if I move the camera a little bit, you can see it's not really touching the floor. And you can do the same with the other objects. So if I select the floor, I can add collision margin and also add a little invisible like rigid body. Now I'm going to show you how we can grab some cubes inside another cube. So first, we need to open this cube. So let's go to edit mode and select this face with this feature and the late face. So we have an open box. Perfect. Let's come back to object mode and we need to add rigid body to everything because we don't have any rigid body. So let's go here, rigid body. I don't want this cube to fall, so I'm going to select passive and let's select this cube and add a rigid body. And to add rigid body to other objects really fast, what you can do is to select all of them and the last we select, this one that is orange, is the parent. So what we can do is to go to object, rigid body and copy from active. Active is this one, the yellow one. So when we say copy the rigid body from the active, all the red ones will copy instantly this rigid body. So let's go to object, rigid body, copy from active. And now if we press play, we have this animation. But what's going on here? Why they don't go inside? I did this in purpose because I want to show you how this works. This is because this cube, if we go here in shape, we have convex hull. So what does it mean this? This means that whatever you delete is like maintaining the original shape. So it's like having here the face that we remove. That's why they interact like that. If you don't want this to happen, what we have to do is to change to mesh. So when we select mesh, now it doesn't remember the original shape. It just consider the actual mesh. So now we won't have this invisible face interaction. So remember, always go to the beginning. And if we press play, all the cubes go inside the cube. So now you know the difference between convex and mesh. I recommend you to play with different cubes and try to put them inside another box. And if you are wondering why there is other options, let me delete all these cubes and create a simple monkey. And let's add a rigid body. So basically, what you can do is to change the shape of the rigid body. For example, if I press spacebar, now we have this normal interaction. But what you can do is to select, for example, box. So now the rigid body is like a box. Or you can select, for example, sphere. Or any of the other shapes. But basically, most of the time, you're going to use or this one or this one. So for today, that's all of the basics of physics simulations. In another tutorial, we're going to learn how to animate with keyframes. If you like this video, give a like and subscribe for more videos about animation in Blender. See you in next video.